All right, ready to become a guitar hero? Let's dive right in. We're gonna explore what really matters when you're starting out. Finding the right guitar, the gear. Overcoming those early challenges, yeah. Because let's be honest, walking into a music store for the first time. It can be overwhelming. Totally, it's like, where do I even start? So first things first, acoustic or electric? It really is the first decision. Right. Finding the instrument that speaks to your musical soul, you know? Okay, so say someone's drawn to like folk music, campfire sing-alongs. Acoustic, all the way. It's in. That classic warm sound, you can take it anywhere. A dreadnought, like the Martin D28, that's the gold standard for that full, rich tone. But if you're dreaming of like rocking out on stage. Electric guitar territory, for sure. Okay, so electric it is, what's next? They're super versatile electrics, huge range of sounds, but you'll need an amp, pedals. It's a whole other world. I bet, and even within acoustics and electrics. Oh, it's not one size fits all, not at all. Right, right. Yeah, like with acoustics, you've got smaller bodied guitars, concert or auditorium guitars, they're great for finger picking. Oh, like those intricate melodies, classical guitar. I okay, got it. Yeah. Then there's the parlor guitar, smaller still, very focused, intimate sound, perfect for blues. And what about those big acoustics I sometimes see? Jumbo acoustics, big sound, perfect for strumming and singing along. It's like a whole guitar family reunion. Okay, so we've got acoustics somewhat figured out. What about electrics? Where do we even begin? Just like acoustics, electrics come in all shapes and sizes. Each one has its own sonic personality, you could say. I like that. Take the Fender Stratocaster, for example. Oh yeah, iconic. Right, known for that bright, articulate sound, rock, blues, you name it. That's why it's so popular, probably so versatile. Exactly. Then you have the Gibson Les Paul, warmer, thicker tones, yeah. perfect for rock, metal, even jazz. I can already picture Slash just shredding on one. And we can't forget the Telecaster, that classic twang. You hear it in country and rockabilly all the time. And for something a little different. The semi-hollow body blends the acoustic and electric qualities. Warm, melotone jazz, blues, even rock. Wow, okay, so many options. This is why I'm glad we're doing this deep dive. But how do you actually choose? It's like picking a favorite song. You hit the nail on the head. And just like with a song, you gotta experience it firsthand. So a trip to the music store it is. Absolutely. Get your hands on some guitars, see how they feel, how they sound. Don't be afraid to ask for help either. The people at music stores are usually passionate about music and happy to guide you. Okay, so you're in the music store, you found the one, but hold on, before you hit the stage, what about the other essentials? It's like, think of it like a toolkit you wouldn't start building without a hammer. Right. What are our must-haves in the guitar toolkit? Picks, for sure. Essential for plucking those strings, especially on acoustic. Ah, yeah. I've seen them, though. So many shapes and sizes. It's all about finding what works for you. Thinner picks for strumming, thicker ones for individual notes. Makes sense. And what about staying in tune? My singing voice could use some help sometimes. Definitely important. Clip-on tuner is a lifesaver. Clips right onto the headstock, tells you exactly what to adjust. No more, like, doing it by ear. Technology is great. Right, and speaking of, a metronome is key too. To like keep your timing in check. Exactly. Helps you develop that solid rhythm, prevents you from rushing or dragging. That's so important. Especially starting out. Now, besides those, we gotta protect that guitar right. Can't just leave it lying around. A good case or gig bag is crucial. Protects it from, you know, bumps, scratches. Don't you do the Jeff stuff too. Exactly. And while we're at it, think about your practice space too. Don't underestimate the little things. Oh, okay, like what? A music stand for one, saves you from hunching over. My back feels better already. Maybe an inspiration board, pictures of your guitar heroes, goals, even just quotes. I love that. Even some nice lighting, a plant or two, make it inviting. Okay, getting zen already. But before we get too comfy, let's get up close and personal with this instrument, guitar anatomy. Right on. Don't worry, it's not a biology lesson or anything. More like learning the parts so we can speak the language. Exactly. So up top, we have the headstock houses, the tuning pegs. Those are what we use with the tuner, right? Yep. Tighten or loosen the strings, changes the pitch. Okay, got it. And then moving down, we have the neck and on the neck. The fretboard. That's where the magic happens. All those frets, it's like a mini city up there. And each fret changes the note. You press the string down behind a fret. It shortens the string, makes the pitch higher. You're picking it up quickly. Hmm. Now, what about where all the strings attach to the body? That's the bridge. You got it. Yeah. Holds those strings in place, plays a big part in the sound, and of course, the body itself. That's where the sound really comes from, right? For sure. Acoustic guitars have that sound hole 
lets the sound project out. Electric guitars, they have pickups. Oh, those magnetic things. Yep, they capture the vibrations and turn them into electrical signals. That's why electrics need amps. Makes them loud. Exactly. There are more parts, of course, but that's the basic idea. A good foundation. Okay, so we've got our gear. We sort of know our way around the instrument. What about actually holding this thing? Posture's got to be important. Hugely. Good posture means you'll be comfortable A and D avoid injuries. No one wants a guitar hero with back pain. Right. Whether you're sitting or standing, keep that back straight. Like a string pulling you up from your head, I always say. Perfect. Now your left hand's going to be on the neck, pressing the strings. Right hand strums or plucks. It's a whole dance. It is. And just like with dancing, it takes practice. Speaking of practice, let's talk chords. Okay, chords. They're like, what makes a guitar sound like a guitar, right? They're the building blocks. Combination of three or more notes played together. So how do they work? Think of them like the alphabet of music. You start with individual letters, then you make words, sentences. And then we're writing novels with chords. You got it. And there are some basic chords everyone learns. A, D, D, C, and M. I actually recognize those from, you know, actual songs. I see. Not as scary as they sound. So once we get those down, what then? Then the fun really begins. You start making music, playing songs. The moment we've all been waiting for. But even with just a few chords, you can play a ton of stuff. No way! It's true. And there are tons of resources out there to find beginner songs. So we've got our chords, but how do we actually play them? That's where strumming comes in. Strumming is all about rhythm. Start with a downstroke, just brush your pick or fingers down across the strings. Down, 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 easy enough. It's all on the wrist and the tempo. Use that metronome. Right, right. Keep it steady, and then what? Then you have the upstroke. It's the opposite motion, brushing up across the strings. Okay, that's how we get that flow. Exactly. As you get better, you can experiment with different strumming patterns, downstrokes, upstrokes. What about, I've heard of this, palm muting. Ah, yeah. So you lightly rest your palm on the strings near the bridge as you strum. Makes it like quieter. Not exactly quiet, more like a percussive sound. Add some texture. Cool. Okay, but how do I remember all this? I'm more of a visual learner. Tablature. Tabs are your friend. Tablature. Sounds kind of intimidating. Not at all. It's like a simplified way to read music for guitar. Instead of notes, it uses numbers on six lines. Each line is a string. You got it. So a zero on the bottom line means you play the thickest string without pressing any frets. Okay, and a one would be the first fret. You got it. Two for the second fret, and so on. It tells your fingers exactly where to go. It's like a road map. Exactly. And there are even symbols for hammer-ons, pull-offs, but we'll save those for another time. And my brain's already full. So tablature tells you the what, but what about the when? Like, how long to hold the note? That's where it gets a little tricky. Yeah. Tabs are great for the basics, but they don't always show the rhythm perfectly. So listening to the song helps. Hugely. Use your ear to guide you. So tabs are good, but knowing a little traditional music notation is helpful too. It's like tabs are the map of the city and notation is knowing the language they speak there. Love that analogy. Okay, so we're reading tabs, we're feeling good. Okay, we've covered so much ground, finding your guitar, the gear, even deciphering tablature. And how to avoid looking ridiculous holding the thing. The most important lesson. But now, the real question. How do we actually get good at this? The magic word is practice. Easier said than done, am I right? For sure. Life gets in the way, motivation fades. How do you make it stick? It's all about finding what works for you. It doesn't have to be hours and hours. Even short, focused sessions are key. OK, short and focused. I like that. What does that look like, though? Think of it like a workout. Got to warm up those muscles, right? Start with some finger stretches. Literally, like, stretching my fingers. Yeah, get the blood flowing, maybe run through some scales, get those fingers moving. So not just jumping right into songs, though. Yeah, right. You gotta build that foundation. Like, you wouldn't build a house starting with a roof. Okay, solid analogy. So we've warmed up, fingers are limber. What's next? Now the fun part, playing songs. This is where you take all that practice and actually make some music. The moment we've all been waiting for. Exactly. Start with something you love, something that makes you want to play. It doesn't have to be like Stairway to Heaven right off the bat. Leave that for later. Even a simple chord progression is great. And there are tons of beginner songbooks, tutorials, all that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And don't be afraid to break things down. Learn one section at a time. Bite-sized pieces. Makes sense. Exactly. And honestly, the most important thing is consistency. A little bit every day is better than one huge cram session. Okay. That I can do. But what about when it gets tough? Because, let's be real, 
it will. It's going to happen. You're going to hit those walls. Everyone does. It's not just me being like musically challenged. Not at all. Those tough moments, they're actually the best for learning. Okay, how so? Because you have to slow down, really figure things out. It's like solving a puzzle. I do love a good puzzle. Right. It can be frustrating, but when you get it, that feeling is amazing. So it's all part of the process. Exactly. And remember, have fun. If you're not enjoying it, what's the point? Truer words have never been spoken. Well, on that note, I think we've covered it all. Guitar 101, we've got you covered. From picking the right instrument to pushing through those inevitable challenges. You're well on your way. To all our listeners out there, keep practicing, keep exploring, keep that passion alive. You never know where the guitar might take you.